Hi everybody, Dr. Becky here from Holistic Alzheimer's Prevention Program. Um, a construction crew just decided to show up as soon as I went to shoot this video. But it's a beautiful, beautiful day outside and I've always liked being outside versus inside. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and video over the construction screaming in the background. Hopefully you can hear me just fine. Um, anyway, I am here today because of a recent article. And when I say recent, it really isn't recent in the medical journals, but it was recent to my attention. And this article was talking about common over-the-counter medications that are scientifically shown to lead to cognitive decline. Uh, and um, the FDA has put black box warnings on a slew of prescription medications that are known to cause cognitive decline, but these over-the-counter meds are still readily available. And again, this website and this YouTube channel is targeted solely on giving you guys tips and tricks to save your brain. So it just seems important that you would want to be aware of over-the-counter medications that you could unwittingly be taking that could lead to the demise of your brain. So I've got my sheet of paper here and I'm going to read some of the common over-the-counter medications that are scientifically shown to cause cognitive decline and I will have a link in the description so that you can go read the research if you feel compelled to do so. So, and anyway, on this sheet, which is probably backwards on your view, um, they have drugs in three different categories. So they're scored a one, a two, a three. If you just take one of these in the category one, it has mild cognitive impairment. And again, that's only taking one. If you take one of these drugs in category two, it has moderate cognitive decline. And if you take one of these in category three, it has severe cognitive decline. And I think you're going to be troubled when you hear what some of these medications are. Again, things that most of you have likely taken. And if these are some things that you're taking on a somewhat regular basis, please know that it is hurting the health of your brain and you may want to reconsider if you really need to be using these over-the-counter medications. All right, so here we go. Um, in the category one department, and again, this is if you use this, there will be mild impairment. One that's common is Zantac. Now, again, the medical name is ranitidine, but it's just commonly known as Zantac. And Zantac is an over-the-counter medication that you can purchase for GERD, the gastroesophageal reflux disorder. So if you're taking Zantac on a regular basis, please know that that is doing mild damage to your cognitive function. Now, the good news is in the category two, there were not any over-the-counter medications. All of the drugs in category two are all prescription medication. But here's the thing that's frightening is then the category three. And again, we said category three causes severe cognitive dysfunction. Do you see my little cat? She's trying to say hi. Um, hold on a minute while I try to get her down. Okay. So anyway, here are some of the category three over-the-counter medications. Tylenol PM, Advil PM, Dimetap, Dramamine, Benadryl, Midol, Pamprin, and Bentil. So Tylenol PM, Advil PM, Dimetap, Dramamine, and Benadryl all contain a key ingredient, and that key ingredient is diphenhydramine. And again, diphenhydramine 
is a, it has what's called an ACB score of three. ACB means anticholinergic burden. So acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter in the brain responsible for cognitive function and memory. And so if acetylcholine is helping the brain, then if you're taking an anticholinergic medication, I mean, that means it's suppressing acetylcholine, so it's suppressing the neurotransmitter responsible for cognitive function and memory. And so again, just to repeat myself, Benadryl. I mean, how many people have taken Benadryl on a regular basis? And maybe not even if they've got allergy things going on, they're just tired and they want to get a good night's sleep and they know, ooh, Benadryl will knock me on my butt and make me tired. And again, that's the same reason people take Tylenol PM or Advil PM. They take those products not necessarily because they've got physical pain, they just want to fall asleep. So again, Tylenol PM, Advil PM, Benadryl, if you're using Benadryl, it doesn't matter what reason you're using Benadryl. It has diphenhydramine, it is going to hurt your brain a lot. Dramamine. Um, most people use Dramamine because of motion sickness. So whether it's in a car, on a boat, on an airplane. So if you have to use Dramamine, um, very, very, very rarely, like you maybe have used Dramamine two or three times your entire life because you knew you were going to be on a cruise ship or you were going to be on an airplane and you know those things make you nauseous. Once or twice in your life isn't going to be the end of the world. But if you're taking this on a very regular basis, that's where the problem comes in. Again, that's why Benadryl, the Advil PM, and Tylenol PM are problematic because people tend to use that frequently to help them get a good night's sleep. And then we think about the Mydol and the Pamprin for women who are having abdominal cramps. And again, it's available over the counter and says it helps with bloating, it helps take your cramps away, and if you have any headaches related to your cramping too, it will help with that. And so how many of us women have bought Mydol and Pamprin and not even given it a second thought? So I sure hope that you will give it a second thought now knowing that it is a category three anticholinergic medication. And then the last one that I mentioned, Bentil, and Bentil's medical name is Dicyclamine, and Bentil is an over-the-counter medication that's used by many people who have irritable bowel syndrome or just frequency with diarrhea just out of nowhere they'll eat something and the food will just run right through them so bentil has been a medication that many many people take every single solitary day because they don't want to have that that bowel urgency and bentil was one of the medications that my mother took every single day for many, many, many years. And so now I can't help but wonder that there were so many things compounded that led to her Alzheimer's disease, there's no doubt about it. And one of these days I will do a video that will highlight all of the things that she unwittingly did that hurt her brain all of these things were all readily available. Um, it wasn't like it was prescription medication that was doing it, but just some lifestyle choices that she made because she had no idea how detrimental it was to the health of her brain. Nobody knew. Again, it wasn't until about 2017 that the research started coming forward about the things that we had control over related to our cognitive function. So my job here is to help you help yourself or your family or your friends make the simple changes at home so that you all together can do what you need to do to save your brains because Alzheimer's is definitely not a way to go. 
And if you found this information useful, please, please, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button again. The YouTube algorithm really feeds on the likes so that other people can see this content in their feed as well. And if you would like more information, please visit my website, www.allsprogram, that's A-L-Z, P-R-O-G-R-A-M, allsprogram.com, where you can learn a whole lot more information. A lot of great free resources are readily available for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you the next time. Bye.